Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief over at theserverside.com. You can follow me on Twitter, please do, at CameronMCNZ. And in this tutorial, I want to talk to you about creating local branches and then pushing those local branches up to your centralized GitLab server. So that might mean creating them using a Git GUI tool, might mean creating them using Eclipse. In this case, I'm actually just going to use Terminal, but I'm going to create those branches locally and then push them up to the remote GitLab server. So all things start by logging into the administrative console for GitLab, which I'm doing right here. You can see I've got my GitLab made easy project. And if I go and take a look at this repository for this project, and specifically the branches, you can see that in a previous tutorial, I created the Git flow branches of release, hotfix, develop, also protected them as well. You can see the little green icon there saying those are protected. Now I did push those down to the client. If I move into my terminal window, I'm going to move into my GitLab made easy folder. You can see I've got a few files in here. If I even do the git status, you can see I'm on the development branch. I'm actually going to move. I'm going to move to the master branch because you know that's usually where people might start off if they've just done a clone of their repository. Um, but I've gotten this master branch here, and I want to kind of mimic sort of a, a proper git flow type of strategy for doing development. And what I want to do is I want to create a, a git flow branch off the develop branch and then push that back to the server. So you can see what it's like to actually create a branch on the client and then push it back to GitLab. And so if you're doing git flow, you have to start off on the develop branch. So I'm going to do a git checkout develop. I don't like that term develop or checkout because it implies something's being locked. It's very old school centralized version control. But that's how you move on to a, a different branch. So now I'm on the development branch. And let's say I wanted to add a fun feature to this project. Well, in order to do that, what you do is you create a branch based on the develop branch. That's why I had to be in the develop branch in order to create this feature branch. So I'm going to say git branch fun feature. Now that creates a new branch called fun feature. I can say git branch dash dash all and you can see that fun feature has been created it doesn't have a corresponding remote because this is all local you can see that over here we don't actually see that fun feature branch now this has created it I, I actually need to move on to it so to move on to that again that's a git checkout and then the name of the branch fun feature by the way you can actually create the branch and check out the branch at the same time by saying git checkout dash b and then the name of the branch i did it in two steps there just to keep things simple again if i do a little ls command you can see that indeed there are the basic files that were in that development branch available to me and i'm going to create a, a new file so i'm going to say touch feature file .html. that just creates the file there's nothing in it but I don't have to put anything in it to demonstrate the usefulness of Git. Always add those files that you create to the index and then do a commit. So git commit dash m and my git commit, commit message should say if somebody looks at this git commit it will add the feature file. Kind of supposed to have imperative git commit messages. So I've got an article on how to write good git commit messages if you are so interested. But now I have that git commit message. I can do a git ref log, even just take a look at the history there. And you can see there's that feature file commit that I just did. There's also the whole history of different commits that have been happening in my local machine there in the ref log. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to get this branch that I'm on, that fun feature branch, and move that up to GitLab here so that it'll actually be available. If I do a refresh on the branches here, you'll notice that there's no listing of the fun feature branch. So how do I do that? Well, I go back into the terminal and the command is git push dash dash set upstream. And by upset upstream, what I'm doing is I'm saying this local branch doesn't have an upstream branch in the remote server that it corresponds to. It's all local now. So I want to map this 
fun feature branch up to a, a new branch on the server. And so that's going to set origin as the upstream for this branch. Now origin just relates to the fact that origin is a server that I originally cloned from, which is going to be the, the GitHub repository, GitLab made easy right here. And so I'm going to push my local changes for this current branch. I'm going to set the origin where I cloned from as the upstream default. And the name of the branch that I'm doing this all with is fun feature, I do believe. So this does my push. There are my credentials. And you can even see it saying, hey, you know what? We've actually moved that fun feature branch up to the server and we're doing a little mapping of it. I can even do a git branch dash dash all here. And you can see that, yeah, we've got that fun feature branch that I'm currently on and that we've actually got a corresponding remote called fun feature. Now, do we really? Because right now you can only see release master hotfix in development. But of course, that's all razzle dazzle because if I do a refresh, I now see that that fun feature branch is there. And I can even go in, take a look at that particular branch, take a look at the commit history, and you'll notice that on the latest commit that happened about two minutes ago, we've got a brand new file called feature file. And so not only have I created that branch, but by pushing that branch up to the central GitLab server, I've actually pushed up all of my commits and including this feature file. And what's also noteworthy is this feature file is not part of any of the other branches. So if I go to the develop branch, you can't see it. And if I go to the master branch, you can't see it. That's part of the isolated development strategy that we have with Git. And of course, if I want that file to go into that develop branch, and maybe even to the master branch, I guess what I could do is always do a merge. But merges are for a future tutorial. And that's all there is to it. That just shows you how easy it is to create some local Git branches and push those Git branches up to the server. Now again, if you want to learn more about GitLab, continue on with the variety of these GitLab tutorials, learn more about just server-side and enterprise development, head over to theserverside.com. And uh, if you're on Twitter, follow me at CameronMCNZ.